la 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 Hello, have we got a story for you today? Recently, Melbourne newspaper The Age published an editorial called How Do We Solve a Problem Like the Unvaccinated? Yes, that's right, an editorial piece, not an opinion piece. We thought we'd take a look at it in some detail. Just for transparency's sake and context for overseas viewers, The Age newspaper is one of Victoria's daily tabloids owned by Nine Entertainment. The chairman of the board of directors at Nine is former federal liberal politician and treasurer Peter Costello. Peter Costello is also chairman of the board of guardians of the Future Fund, an Australian government investment fund with over $2 billion worth of shares in pharmaceutical and vaccine manufacturers, including CSL, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Novartis and Merck. The connection between the pharmaceutical industry, government and the media is not new, but is generally well secreted in Australia at least by American standards. Good Morning America is brought to you by Pfizer. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360, brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference, brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight, brought to you by Pfizer. Early start, brought to you by Pfizer. Friday night on Aaron Burnett out front. Brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by Pfizer. This weather report brought to you by Pfizer. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by... Pfizer is a big influencer in Australia too. The Immunisation Coalition claims to be an independent organisation that informs governments and fights vaccine hesitancy. The chair of the Scientific Advisory Committee at the Immunisation Coalition is Professor Robert Boy who is also head of the clinical research team at the National Centre for Immunisation Research and Surveillance. And the Immunisation Coalition's funding comes from, wait for it, Pfizer, Sanofi, GlaxoSmithKline and others in the pharmaceutical industry. Independent Vaccine Advocacy in Australia, brought to you by Pfizer. But wait, there's more. According to the Guardian newspaper, up until 2020, the media organisation Australian Associated Press, or AAP, were part owned by Nine Entertainment and Murdoch's News Corp. But according to Nine Sydney Morning Herald, as of late 2020, the Morrison government took over funding of the media organisation with a $5 million grant. So if this is true, is the AAP now a propaganda wing of the Morrison government? And if so, who is checking? the fact checkers. We've only scratched the surface of such infiltration of media by big money and government. But please don't take our word for it. You can conduct your own research. Let's get into the editorial. It begins. As Victoria takes its baby steps towards fully reopening thanks to an encouragingly high rate of vaccination, an intriguing question has emerged. What to do about the as yet unjabbed? What to do with the unjabbed? From where we're sitting, this sounds like the age editors are asking what could be done to extend the already high levels of punishment for non-compliers and incite more dehumanisation. Don't the unjabbed operate as a control group for the continued study into the safety and efficacy of these novel inoculants? Doesn't this serve as an important public good? The article goes on. The question now is how to persuade the shrinking but still significant number of holdouts to get with the program. Now that the common goal, reopening, is within reach, what else might motivate them? Well, if the age is sincerely wondering about what would motivate people who haven't already been jabbed, why not ask us? A very conspicuous detail in all of this is that The Age and Nine Entertainment more generally has not published a single article about Pfizer's corporate track record throughout the entire pandemic. 
the billions of dollars Pfizer has paid in fines and court settlements is, it seems apparent, just the cost of doing business and only constitutes a tiny proportion of their profit. Pfizer has recorded record profits thanks to this pandemic and has aggressively muzzled governments from speaking critically about their products and contracts. But what happens when a vaccine manufacturer starts bullying? Governments are silenced, supplies are halted, and profits take precedence over saving lives. I'm not describing a hypothetical situation here. I am describing what Pfizer is doing. To quote an empathetic dude on Twitter, if you care about the ethics of the company that produces your coffee, but not the ethics of the company producing your jabs, ask yourself why. Chillingly, the Age editorial writers raise no real humanitarian concerns about the Victorian government's hardline treatment for those of us who are refusing to be jabbed. On Sunday, Premier Daniel Andrews, the editorial continues, revealed that when Victoria reopens, life for the unvaccinated will remain extremely limited. This casual authoritarianism is alarming and is receiving little coverage or analysis by the age, let alone any other corporatized media. It is breeding a mob morality that is closing down science and closing down debate. The popular myth for getting jabbed is the vaccines may not stop transmission, but at least they reduce it. But as independent investigative journalist Marianne DeMarcy explains, the only problem is that real world data suggests the opposite. The most recent report from the UK government website clearly shows that despite reduced hospitalizations and deaths, vaccinated people over the age of 30 years are twice as likely to become infected with COVID-19 than unvaccinated people. The science doesn't lie rhetoric has a problem when there are two conflicting scientific views. The Age, like almost all other media outlets in Australia, is reporting something very different than the UK government's data. They refuse to offer the other side's narrative, which is not surprising because doctors in Australia have effectively been silenced from deviating from the government's policy. Marianne de Marcy continues. Many explanations are plausible, but one circulating theory is that the vaccines can reduce the severity of disease and dampen symptoms, leading to a more asymptomatic infection. Because vaccinated people feel protected by the vaccine, they may also take fewer preventative measures. The Age editorial essentially is saying what this cartoon is. Those who do not go along with the corporate science program are making everyone else suffer and putting the vulnerable at risk. We are ugly, useless, a burden on society, and we are stupid. But in a transparent, post-corporatized scientific world, this is how the same cartoon may well be assembled. How do you think 2021 will be remembered? The Age editorial draws to an end with this remarkable line. Must we mop up every last conspiracy theorist or is there a level of vaccine coverage at which it is safe enough to ignore them? Speaking on the contagious trend to label your perceived enemy as a conspiracy theorist, Edward Snowden has said, the worst conspiracies are hiding in plain sight. Like its sister newspaper, the Sydney Morning Herald, the age's ongoing coverage of vaccine hesitancy is nothing but an othering and shaming exercise. It brings no public good, but brings hate and contempt and green lights authoritarian governments. Furthermore, what is conspicuous 
is what political coverage the age leaves out, such as this impassioned speech from Member of the European Parliament, Christine Anderson. But it is not the goal that renders a system oppressive. It is always the methods by which the goal is pursued. Whenever a government claims to have the people's interest at heart, you need to think again. In the entire history of mankind, there has never been a political elite sincerely concerned about the well-being of regular people. What makes any of us think that it is different now? If the Age of Enlightenment has brought forth anything, then certainly this. Never take anything any government tells you at face value. Always question everything any government does or does not do. Always look for ulterior motives and always ask, cui bono, who benefits? Whenever a political elite pushes an agenda this hard and resorts to extortion and manipulation to get their way, you can almost always be sure your benefit is definitely not what they had at heart. As far as I am concerned, I will not be vaccinated with anything that has not been properly vetted and tested and has shown no sound scientific evidence that the benefits outweigh the disease itself and possible long-term side effects, which to this day we don't know anything about. I will not be reduced to a mere guinea pig by getting vaccinated with an experimental drug. And I will most assuredly not get vaccinated because my government tells me to and promises in return I will be granted freedom. Let's be clear about one thing. No one grants me freedom, for I am a free person. So I dare the European Commission and the German government throw me in jail, lock me up and throw away the key for all I care. But you will never be able to coerce me into being vaccinated if I, the free citizen that I am, choose not to be vaccinated. So we leave you with these two questions. Whose views are being protected and promoted in the Age editorial? And whose views and rights are being diminished and silenced? For more positive news and the latest information from independent doctors around the world on at-home common sense prevention and treatment for COVID, please visit the World Council for Health. They are medical experts not funded by the pharmaceutical industry or silenced by the government.